Hello and welcome to the Down Under Visa Philippines to Australia podcast series. I'm your host, Jeff Harvey, Registered Migration Agent with Down Under Visa, the premier Australian migration agents in Manila, Philippines, specialising in visas for Australian Filipino couples. We hope you enjoy this podcast and hope it proves useful to you. Please feel free to share this with your partner and with any of your interested friends. Let's get started. Okay, today's podcast is based on the blog article, Life in Philippines, Jeff's Ramblings Eight Years In. I think most of you know that we shut the doors on the life in Queensland and we settled in the Philippines in 2010 and became Australian expats. When I look back, I realise it, it was an incredibly bold move, but it was well planned over a long period. And oh, look, I've never been lazy and I've never been cowardly. And I was fortunate to marry a very fine Filipino woman, so I certainly wasn't on my own. And uh, uh, quite bluntly, I couldn't have done it, certainly couldn't have done it so well, probably couldn't have done it at all. Uh, without her so something to keep in mind for yourselves and eight years later whilst I'll always be an Aussie at heart I I believe I will leave the Philippines one day in a box this is home and we're staying now I was in a bit of a rambling mood when I wrote this so I might just explain why the Philippines is great for some but not for all a lot of people who will tell me that they're planning on moving to the Philippines. Some people who've never even been here, they say this is what they're going to do because they think life is going to be very easy and very cheap for them. So that's what they plan to do. When she was breastfeeding, and we had adopted a six-week-old baby. And well, Sarah was producing plenty of milk, so she quite happily breastfed two babies at once. Now, she didn't blink over it. Um, Two kids grew up together and they're, they're now, now the best of mates. Um, but seriously, uh, ask yourself how you would go in Australia if you had somebody who worked for you who, who was breastfeeding and you said, hey, you know, while you're at it, would you mind breastfeeding this one? They'd, uh, they'd have a blue fit and I'm sure you know it. But um, that was exceptionally kind of Sarah. But to be honest, in this country, it wasn't that unusual or an amazing thing. Um, now we have relatives who if we need them for something they'll happily get, we can we could wake them up in the middle of the night and they'll happily drive 10, 12 hours away to, to help out and not even, not a big issue and no thanks necessary. Now once I needed to get an NBI clearance for myself now I have the back from hell which gives me pretty awful pain when I need to stand for even a short time. Now, the way it works here is that foreigners, which is what all non-Filipinos are referred to here, and it's not meant in a bad way, it's just the term that's used. Foreigners need to get the NBI clearances from the main office in Ewan Avenue in Manila. So off we go. Um, hugely, horribly crowded place for the line going out the, out the door. Um, someone mentions my back issue to a guard and he sorts it out uh, and I, I get my own section basically. Uh, people are shuffled to one side, a, a counter opens up specifically for me. Uh, so I, I get my own section and I'm, I'm raced in, raced out. I'm in and out of there in 10 minutes. Uh, and no, it wasn't because we bribed anybody. It's the NBI, for goodness sakes. You don't wander around the National Bureau of Investigation saying, oh, and this is for you. Um, <laughs> get arrested for that. So it was just purely out of kindness. Um, not that unusual here. Now, I could go on and on, but I think you get the idea. Um, and just the fact that people will smile so easily... People smile all the time. It's not usual for somebody to 
and go around grumbling with a sour face. Uh, people will smile for not much reason at all. And how they will happily you know, adopt somebody new quickly. A new staff member arrives and they're you know, treated like a new sister within about a day. And, you know, children fill people's hearts with happiness. Uh, I've seen uh, situations of security guards, you know, picking up a child and, and holding them for the parents, quite happy to do so. Uh, and you, for pretty much anybody will babysit your child at a moment's notice. And older children very rarely get jealous when a new baby arrives. In fact, they usually they adore them instantly and will take care of them happily. Uh, older people are treated with respect. Uh, my mother had been here to to visit when, when she was still alive. Uh, she commented once when our little girl Maggie was about two and she vomited on herself like two-year-olds tend to do and these two who were like 11 and 13 or something at the time, they 11 and 12 I think, um, they stepped in and they cleaned her up and changed her clothes and Without anybody asking, my mother was quite shocked because yeah, try and get a couple of kids that age to do that in Australia and good luck to you. And, uh, you know, they treated my, treated my mother with uh, utmost respect. Now, I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted here. I think most of you who fell in love with a lovely Filipina lady also fell in love with the Philippines because of the people that you've been privileged to meet and to know. And what else keeps me here? I can't be blunt because this is an area you mustn't ignore, you can't ignore. And whilst you may like to think that you can live on love, well, no, no you can't. You need a roof over your head to keep the rain out and you need to eat and that takes money. Now look, we have a successful business here, as, as no doubt you know, called Down Under Visa, great place for visas. Um, and I like the fact that I can afford to live here and to pay for the things I need to pay for. I'm far too practical to ever be happy here without that. So the question, is life in the Philippines for everyone? No, no, life in the Philippines is most definitely not for everyone, as many have discovered. Yes, there are those rustic types out there who quite happily live on the smell of an oily rag. There are those who add an extra room to the parents' neighbor hut and sleep under a mosquito net net and eat dried fish and rice for breakfast and absolutely love it. These are the ones who live in shorts and t-shirts and chinellas, which is what thongs are called here, and roar around the place on a cheap Chinese motorbike and absolutely love it. And I can't and won't knock them, but it sure as hell ain't me. I can be. I'll be honest with you, and unless you describe yourself as a you know, rustic, earthy type, then you really do need to make sure that you have a healthy and reliable source of income and not some wacky scheme to have the best Sari Sari store in town and uh, to do extremely well on that. Um, and once I feel really sorry for the chaps who come here on a pension and a, and a very optimistic budget and think they can lead a stress-free life. You know, they loved it every time they visited and memories of those holiday mode times drew them back. Rose-coloured glasses and full bore, they assumed that this would be their daily life. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to touch on those horror stories of wives and girlfriends who drained a man's bank account and leaving him destitute. The, there are enough moaning and groaning websites out there for of one-sided tales of woe about the you know the poor innocent chap who didn't do a single thing wrong and uh, um, and yet he got he got taken for every penny that he owned uh, look it does happen here there's no question about it um, and it happens everywhere else in the world I mean it is quite possible to get taken to the cleaners by an Australian wife it's been known to happen think about it gentlemen why did you start looking in the face in the Philippines in the first place if everything was so perfect back in Australia. And look, I would really hope that anyone listening to this who is contemplating moving here, I hope that 
you have a material enough relationship and you know each other well enough to have some well earned well earned trust and faith in each other. I hope you're not planning on doing this with the you know, the young lady that you've known for a few months and you've you know, whacked your house on the market and you, you plan on settling down here. I hope that you have been in an established relationship, married relationship, de facto relationship for at least a number of years and you know each other inside and out. Um, but apart from that, I will warn you against those who can and will try to con you. Uh, somewhere along the way, if you do settle here, you will get stung. Someone's going to con or scam you. This is almost a certainty. I, I just hope that you won't get stung so hard that you can't recover. But please understand one thing, and that is that you are a rich man here, even if you don't think you are. And there will be plenty of people who want some or all of what you have the quicker that you learn that you are a target, which is probably for the first time in your life, the better. Now, over-enthusiastic new friends, note the key phrase there, over-enthusiastic new friends, these are the ones who just are so delighted that they met you and they're, you know, they're so incredibly happy and please come around to our place and then we'll come around to your place and we'll get to know each other and how fortunate we are to have met these fantastic new friends. Uh, people aren't normally that enthusiastic when they just meet somebody. So think about that. Quite often it means something. Uh, family members, uh, they, they can be... Filipinos and even other white fellows out there could try to con you and don't just assume it's only the you know the chaps who live in the slum who are going to try and con you there are uh, plenty of expats who came here who didn't do their budgeting properly who are struggling there were those who came here um, might have lost their savings by being stupid may have had no savings to start with May have come here with the most fantastic of business ideas which went horribly wrong and found themselves stuck here. And they're as likely to try and scam you as anybody else. So, look, if you have limited life, save, limited life savings or if you're on a fixed income, think very carefully about the consequences. This is a lovely place, full of lovely people, but it's not a place that you want to be without money. Now look, rock bottom is a very, very long way down here and it hurts a lot when your bum hits it. So if you are, again, if you're planning on moving here, you're going to set a budget. Just remember that budgets are just figments of your imagination based on theories rather than fact. Make a budget by all means. Think about it very carefully. Think about, try, don't leave anything out. Try and cover absolutely everything. Okay, come up with a figure and then double it. And then when you've, if you've been here for 12 months, redo it again. And it's really only then that you should make any firm plans about living here permanently. Come here and rent for a year, but don't, don't slap everything on the market, on the market, sell up your house and cash everything out and head over here and say this is it. Do that for 12 months and make, then make a decision after that. And will the lack of Aussiness here annoy you? Now, maybe a little, maybe a lot. Again, it's really, it's not for everyone. Um, someone quite wise and experienced told me before we came here that he said after five years here I would hate it and want to leave and never come back. That's what happened with him. Um, he said after your first year you'll say it's fantastic. After the second year, it will start to niggle at you, and as time goes on, you'll absolutely detest. You'll absolutely detest it. Um, well, in our case, no, that that didn't happen. Um, again, a lot, of, a lot of it does come down to finances. We're doing quite well, and well, you know, I happen to know that he wasn't doing quite well. He was struggling the whole time, and uh, that only makes things more difficult. So. Yes, things do annoy and frustrate me here. No question about it. I am a bit of a control freak by nature and I'm probably not as laid back as one should be to be a resident here. However, 
I can weigh the good and the bad, and I do find more good things. Uh, things that annoy the hell out of me in Australia too, as they probably do with you. But, uh, you know, you need to be realistic. I, I don't expect utter perfection. There were enough good things to keep me here. And again, we can afford to do so, which is a, a big plus. So please only move here, only settle here. If you, you know for certain you really can afford to live here. That means having a stable income. That is a very, very big, big part of the whole thing. Now, I mean, we managed to, we managed to build a good life for ourselves here, and you know we can afford to live here comfortably, and we can afford to do what we want and what we need to, what we need to be able to do. And look, it's probably good, a good approach to life, really. If you want to be happy with your life, make yourself a life that you will enjoy. What's stopping you? Thanks very much. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of the Down Under Visa Philippines to Australia podcast series. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed and we hope you found this useful. Australian visas from the Philippines are not easy and the outcome matters as you well know. Please feel free to contact us anytime if you need some further help. And we look forward to talking to you again next time. Bye bye.